Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Jennings' AP Biology. Today we're going to talk about natural selection as an evolutionary force. Now, evolution is reliant on this concept of fitness. This was introduced by Darwin and what you need to understand that about fitness is that fitness is a measure of reproductive success, not how able-bodied you are. Most people think fitness as a relation to strength or overall competence. And that's not always the case. All fitness is, is the more likely you are to live, the more likely you are to reproduce. Now this ends up working with genetics. See, Darwin had a hard time explaining why is that the traits that make you fit are the ones carried on to the offspring. How does that actually drive evolution? Natural selection is a great driver of evolution, a great mechanism to explain it. The problem is he couldn't fully explain the foundation behind this. And that wasn't until genetics started making this, making this big I wouldn't say comeback, but making us big showing, and showing that is a dominant force. Now genetics explains this as the traits that help you survive are the ones that are going to accumulate. Now these traits that we're going to talk about, as they accumulate within the population, that allows the organism to further survive, but also those traits that because they help that organism survive, they're going to become more and more popular in the sense of more and more individuals are going to display that trait. So that's going to change the overall genetic frequency. So this all ultimately really gets down into is this concept called genetic frequency, and we're going to talk about this in future videos. Genetics explains this in the sense of that these traits will help you survive, and there's one that we're going to accumulate within the population. So that means natural selection is what we consider a selective, it wouldn't be selective if it didn't say selection in the name, and adaptive force. So natural selection is both selective and adaptive. That means it has a pressure that selects against individual traits, and it purposely selects against individual traits, and it causes those individuals to adapt to those pressures. Now natural selection is helped supported by a few different evidences. First one known as predation. Now, you wouldn't think predation with these two these moths here. But these moths, even though they look like totally different, they are the same species. They are known as the peppered moth. This is actually the natural condition in its environment. So this here is also a peppered moth. Now this is indicative of its environment. Its environment is typically a white bark tree which the moth lays upon. And you can barely see the moth in the picture that you see right here. It blends in effortlessly, meaning it evades predators. But when the environment changed due to change in man, by man, when uh, the Industrial Revolution, the trees went black, meaning the white peppered moth slowly became easier to identify. Meanwhile, it's same within the population, it's variation within the population variety, black moths, that while they were easy to identify on these trees, all of a sudden became camouflaged. So their traits all of a sudden became very advantageous. So fitness is not just a static force. And that's something we really need to understand. Fitness is relative. It's relative to the environment it's in. If your environment changes, your fitness will likely change as well. So be sure you understand that fitness is relative. If the environment changes, we will see a change in that population's fitness. For the longest time, being a white pepper moth was very fit. But whenever the coal started being burned during the Industrial Revolution, all of a sudden it became very unfavorable to be a white pepper moth. So the turn, tables can be turned. So this is one of the examples of natural selection, predation. There's many more examples of predation out there. Almost all of them deal with some form of camouflage. Another example is physiological selection. Now physiological selection is a little different. Now this is a broader term, as you saw in your Prezi that you interacted with. It's a very broad concept. Physiological selection is all about how well is that organism's physiological or anatomy helping it survive. It could be like the snake with an unhinged jaw and you know natural immune system defenses within the population. All that kind of stuff. And here I brought an example of some bacteria. Now these bacteria do not look very special but they are a very special type of bacteria called halophiles. It's a very special class of bacteria in archaeans. Halophiles basically are salt lovers. High levels of salt is fatal to the majority of organisms. It's a dehydrant, it causes osmosis to work in a negative sense, and it causes organisms to become hypertonic and eventually die. Because of this likelihood that the organism is going to die, 
if they come across this across this salt, high salt environments. That means organisms that can tolerate this or have a greater physiological preference for salt, like halophiles, all of a sudden they have less competition, meaning natural selection works in their favor. Basically, they outcompete all life that lives in this area, and they become very dominant. So while halophiles aren't very common in, say, your bathroom sink, they're very common in, say, the Dead Sea or uh, Great Salt Lake, where the high level of salinity basically makes it very difficult for other organisms to live there. So it also means you have very less, very low chance of, of predators in addition to competition. And lastly, another example of natural selection is this idea of coevolution. Now, coevolution is a very big concept. This is a concept that two or more species evolve in lockstep. Basically, if one evolves, the other evolves as well. Now, coevolution can be beneficial, such as a pollinator. We have a hummingbird here. The hummingbird is adapted to this very specific plant, and this plant has adapted its flower to be very specific to this hummingbird species. They're one and one. That's great. But also, predator prey can be coevolution, and this is what we consider antagonistic. Basically, this is the better mousetrap situation. If you build a better mousetrap, you, nature's going to provide a better mouse. So the predator will get evolve an evolutionary advantage that allows it to hunt the prey better. And the prey will hopefully have some variation within its population to allow it to evade that predator. And because of that, it drives natural selection in both directions. It drives it for the predator and the prey. Now, the problem with coevolution is that if one of the individuals was to, say, go extinct, especially if you're entirely dependent, like in the pollinator situation, you may have a difficult time surviving. Uh, and that's what we're seeing with uh, the avocado tree. The avocado tree, its seed is a very large seed. Uh, pollination is kind of hard. Of, I mean, dispersal of seeds is kind of difficult for the avocado. It turns out the avocado tree had an ancient, very ancient seed dispersal mechanism. That organism, though, went extinct a long time ago, but luckily for it, humans discovered the avocado, and we end up being the dispersal organism for it. But this large mammal went extinct a long time ago, and it could have caused the pollen, uh, the avocado tree to go extinct or be very limited. Coevolution is very, there are two species intertwined. If something goes wrong, they may have difficulty. Well, that concludes natural selection as an evolutionary force. Be sure you understand that natural selection is all about fitness, and it's how reproductively successful you are. If you have... Success, that means your genetics is going to allow those traits to accumulate and you overall change the genetic frequency. And that natural selection is a selective and adaptive force. A great examples of natural selection include predation, physiological selection, and coevolution. There's many more out there, and if you have any questions, be sure to ask and let me know. I appreciate it. See you next time.